And with that, we'll go to, since we're going to use this one to actually calibrate a sprayer, we'll take a look briefly at some of the information and then we'll move to the, the actual calibration. Okay, it's a herbicide. Good thing since we're treating plants. Uh, this label actually, yes, I actually highlighted it there. This label actually mentions noxious and invasive weeds, which puts, is, is another reason and this, this particular chemical is very, very effective at, on several of the noxious weeds that Kim has been uh, discussing, including Russian knapweed and uh, star thistle, some of those kinds of things. Uh, the signal word on this, on the second page, I did give you the whole label, is caution. It does say moderate eye irritation. Gives you an idea of what you should be wearing. And again, it's common sense. Long pants and a long sleeve shirt, which I don't have on today, but we're only using water, so it doesn't count. And, uh, you know, shoes, better yet, boots, and then socks. In other words, you know, the barefoot, shorts, no shirt, not maybe the best one thing to be wearing when you're using any of this kind of stuff. Uh, storage and disposal. What to do with the empty containers. Fairly common sense, but it gives you some pretty good information. Yeah. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff on page three, and it's also on other areas where it says ma maximum application rate, and I highlighted that. There's a lot in here on the application amounts and rates, and you'll find it in multiple places on the label. This is really, really important stuff. Applications, methods, and techniques. One that I'll touch on outside. Uh, page four, just a couple of highlighted a few areas. Apply the specified rate of milestone as a coarse, low pressure, Spray. And then it goes on, uh, let's see, yeah, spray volume should be sufficient to uniformly cover foliage. Let me go back to that coarse low pressure spray. It doesn't give you a whole lot of information there in terms of details, but what it does is it tells you is you don't want a very, very fine spray. Uh, you know, sort of a mist situation at very high pressure because this product doesn't need it. And so, and we'll see that outside. So when you're using you know, a cheap, and I do mean cheap, little hand sprayer like that, or the better ones over here, you can control the pressure. And so you need just enough pressure to get it out. It can't dribble out, but neither does it want to be coming out, you know, in a great big blast. And you can adjust the spray so that you're getting good sized droplets so that it's not volatilizing and moving with the wind or the heat. That's all that says, but it gives you an idea of what you want. There are other products that want to be practically in a fog and you literally need to cover the entire surface of the, every single leaf and stem on a plant. This product, you do not need to do that. You need good, uniform, adequate coverage but you don't need to have the thing soaking wet and dripping off and covered in a fog. That's all it's telling you, but it gives you an idea of how to, how to work your sprayer. Uh, and mixing and calibration instructions, uh, including, uh, which we'll get into more outside, so bring this out with you. The amount of the product to add to your sprayer based on how you've calibrated it and how you're using it. This also gives you some information on spot applications and maximum rates through a season. We'll touch on that a little bit outside. And then finally, what we'll really be using outside after we've calibrated the sprayer is this chart that says, okay, if you are putting on 20 gallons per acre of total material and you want so many fluid ounces per acre of this product, how much do you put in your little sprayer that holds one, two, or three, or maybe five gallons? So that's, that's where the calibration of the sprayer comes in. Are there any questions on any of that before we go out and I get some volunteers to do this?
Alright. Okay, when you're calibrating yeah. a sprayer, any sprayer, whether it be a little hand sprayer or a larger backpack one, or for that matter, some of the ones with 120 foot spans for big cropland fields, you gotta you gotta see how much product you're putting on a known area. So one very <laughs> useful guilty, size. Guilty that I like to use, I, I gave you a couple of sizes on that calibration sheet there, uh, but a most useful size, 30 inches wide by 17 feet, 5 inches long, if you do the arithmetic, that is exactly one one thousandth of an acre. And by the way, so you know, not that you're probably going to do a lot of it, but when you're out in cornfields or cotton fields, and you want to count how many plants per acre. If everything's planted on a 30 inch spacing, you measure a spot 17 feet 5 inches long, count the number of plants in that length, and multiply it by a thousand. So uh, corn planting, which is 34 to 36,000, 35,000 plants per acre, in this row, single row, 17 feet 5 inches long, you're going to have 34 or 35 plants. You do that two or three times in a field, it's a very quick way to know how many plants per acre population you got. It's also useful for calibrating a sprayer. And, and I like it because I don't like spraying enormous areas on the ground and having to do more work than I have to. If you want a slightly larger size, a square that's 20 feet 10 inches by 20 feet 10 inches, I think is what it works out to, is one one hundredth of an acre. Only reason for doing that, you can make mark any size you want, but it makes the arithmetic easier, as we'll see here pretty shortly. So we're going to use this, 17 feet 5 inches by 30 inches. I will touch briefly on these, although I'm not going to use them. They're just playing with water. If I can give you any advice, it would be this. I personally don't worry about wearing these when I'm spraying, unless I'm using something nasty, and I never do. I do use these for mixing. Just common sense. When you're mixing, you're working with a concentrate. And a, con a spot of concentrate on your skin or in your eyes is just a whole different ball game than a drop from a few ounces in a gallon of water. Good idea to use them. I won't today. Besides, they're brand new and I can't hold on to anything or get them off or get them on or anything else. <laughs> They are a pretty orange color, I'll give you that. Okay. A couple other little pieces of equipment, we won't use this either. One of the greatest things in the world, well worth buying, you can buy it, is just a, a marker die. One to two ounces typically in a sprayer of this size, and you can see that color. It's a blue, blue color. Get it on your skin, you're going to have a beautiful sort of an aqua sort of a you know deep Caribbean sea color on your fingers. It does wear off after a while, but it, I promise you, you get it on your fingers, it's there for about 48 hours until really it just wear wears off. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but it's wonderful for spot spraying or even spraying an area so you can see what you've covered and what you have. Again, yeah, we'll use it today. Hard light. Okay, I like. Just, uh, yeah, this kid gave me this. Uh, I'm not sure if you can if you get this at Lace Hardware or Walmart or something under high light. I do know that they have some of those concentrated dyes that you can buy, eight ounce bottle or something like that, which goes a long way. You ordered that online. Yeah, pretty pretty easy, great stuff. Not particularly expensive. It costs more to ship it. Mm. A measuring cup, which we'll use in a minute. I hate this. Now yeah, they're going to pack the sprayer with a little water in it. Not something you normally use for most pesticide applications. Just a cheap old syringe that no longer fits for vaccinating dogs or horses or whatever. When we do the milestone, you will see that the recommended maximum rate is 7 ounces per acre, and if you're spraying 12 gallons per acre, and you got a little sprayer like this, you can do 
the arithmetic without having to do it and say that's not very darn much herbicide. It's much easier to measure with one of these than it is to try and look at a measuring cup and say, oh, what's a quarter of an ounce? We'll probably use it in a lot of cases you won't. Roundup, for example, as, as a common example. In most situations, you're going to be looking at two to three ounces per gallon of water for after you've calibrated, somewhere in that range, two to three, maybe four, which you can measure. This is quite different, and that's because Roundup goes on at a quart to a quart and a half to two quarts per acre and higher, depending on what you're trying to treat and what the label says. So, well, enough on that. I need a volunteer or a conscript <laughs> if nobody volunteers. I'll be your volunteer. Okay, there you go. I said this was a cheap sprayer. I meant it, not in, as in inexpensive, which it also is, but cheap as in a piece of junk. However, we're going to use it. Yeah, exactly. Let me just get this up to something like an appropriate pressure. Necessarily cover every single square centimeter of the area you're spraying, but it covers most of it. So, Jim, what we want to do is we want to wet the area, kind of like you know this, whatever you feel comfortable with, something like that, all the way from in this marked area. And I need someone with a watch to tell them when to go. And then when Jim hits the end and says stop, tell us how many seconds it is. So I need someone to run a watch. Wait, wait. Okay, who's doing it? Good timer. But I can't see. <laughs> Dang those well, I'll, I'll do it, Rachel. I got my watch right here. Okay, there you go. Two, one, go. <laughs> Make sure you get it well covered. 